I think inevitably they're going to be transformational. Um, some organisations identify a discrete list of areas where they have, either have problems or they want benefits, and they will focus on those, but I think in the course of the um, SAP programme they'll encounter more transformation than they were expecting. For other organisations, transformation is the whole part of the point of the programme. They really want to have a deep look at how they operate and look at how they, uh, how, how they can improve and change the way they operate. And for them, SAP is just an enabler. So either way, you're going, you're going to encounter transformation. Organisations have to de develop a vision for their future, a future for how they're going to operate after they've actually uh, gone live with SAP. The programme teams need that because they need the direction. They actually need to know what the organisation is expecting from them before they actually launch into the detailed design. But it's also incredibly important for directors, stakeholders, business sponsors to really understand how the company is going to operate, what the programme is going to bring them, so that they can buy in on that. And once they've really bought in on it, then they're more likely to provide the programme with the resources it needs and the decisions that it needs taken on its behalf to move the programme forward successfully. Not really. They're a little light on it. They're quite good at... Um, addressing how you identify the scope of the programme, but actually the overall vision for how the company will operate after they've gone live is not something that's fully addressed, and that's a problem. Well, there is a framework of, um, of tools and areas of focus that they can look at, and which I'm going to talk about now, um, which, which they can go through and which will help them put together a comprehensive vision for how they'll operate across the whole of their organisation. I mean, a great starting point is if they have a, a business strategy. That will typically be fairly high level, but at least the major headlines of their direction of travel will be in there. I think before you start major SAP programs, you probably need to get down to a lower level of detail, but that's a good place to start. SAP themselves have a couple of offerings which are free of charge, which can, which can be factored into creating the vision. Um, they offer a free benchmarking service, which organisations can use to actually see how they perform relative to their peers, identifying areas where they're performing relatively well or relatively poorly, which can become focuses for the, uh, for the programme. They also have a value management tool which helps create a valuated business case. It supports a methodology to help the organisation create the business case and identify the benefits and the savings that they expect to get from the programme. Now, it's very good by itself, um, but there are particular areas of focus that a company can look at to feed into that tool and into that uh, piece of work to create the business case, which it the tool itself doesn't really bring out, but if you add these areas of focus to what's inside the tool, it's a great combination. The first area an organisation should potentially look at is its corporate structure. Um, by that I mean the series of holding companies and, and subsidiaries. Typically these may have evolved over a period of time, or they may have uh, increased as a, over, as a result of programmes of acquisition. Um, it's worth organisations rationalising those wherever possible and simplifying them. Simply simplifying them and reducing the number of subsidiaries will reduce costs for an organisation. And the programme needs to know exactly the organisational scope before it starts. Along the same vein, and quite topically because we're talking now in early June 2013, companies can look at the way they structure where they procure materials and services from and where they sell materials and services from to try and be as tax efficient as possible. And I've known organisations for which that was the major driver for the programme. Companies should then look at the products and services they wish to sell to their customers. It may be that they've had aspirations to sell particular things in the past and haven't been able to do so because they've been constrained by their existing systems. SAP may allow, may allow them to, be, to do more. If they end up deciding and arriving at the idea that they do want to sell different products and different, uh, different services, then again the project team need to be aware that this will probably result in using different functionality and different processes. Organisations can also look at how they want to, in want to interact with their key stakeholders in the future, by which I mean their suppliers, their customers, their employees, banks. Do they want to use new technology available in SAP or additional technologies to work in a different way with their customers and suppliers? provide them with access to different information? Do they want to um, provide employees with, topically at the moment, mobile devices to give them more information to help, their, to help them do their work wherever they happen to be? So getting that interaction model with your key stakeholders helps shape how you're going to work in the future. Companies should also consider what additional technologies over and above SAP they may wish to use could be RFID, could be optical character recognition, might be barcoding, might be many other things that are coming on the market and available today. But SAP may be just part of an overall solution set. And again, the programme needs to understand that. An important area of focus is where companies are going to perform their business activities. Is it going to be local? 
is it going to be national, regional or global? I've worked with major organisations for whom the switch from a national model to a regional model drove the programme and produced billions of dollars in savings. So it, it's worth considering that. Do they want to use shared services? Are they going to perform some activities in one central location? The programme team needs to understand that because that will change the processes they design significantly. If you do change where you're going to perform your business activities, that will impact your organisational model. If you move for example, from that example from national to regional, the regional roles become more important, there will be a large number of national roles which become less important, may in fact disappear, so the impact on the organisation structure has got to, be, got to be considered. Once you've thought about all of those sorts of things and fed them into the business case, you'll probably be in a position to do three other things which are essential to completing the vision. One is develop a high-level process flow, set of high-level process flow diagrams. And I do mean high-level, it doesn't need to be down in the detail, but it's a great input for a project team to really understand its process scope. You can also look at developing future performance reporting models, again it can be high-level, uh, data models and systems models so that the team understand what the end state systems landscape is likely to look at. If you do all of those things, and you can deliver a, bit, a business case which not only provides the numbers but actually provides the narrative which describes what the organisation is, is, is hoping to end up as. The programme team has an absolutely fantastic opportunity to deliver a great programme.